Hello, I'm Marcy Schaefer from Fairfield County Parks. Today we're going to learn about monarch butterflies. Monarchs are really fascinating. People tend to love butterflies in general. They usually are colorful, they're beautiful, they're moving around during the day when we can see them. They also have a really fascinating life cycle that includes a caterpillar phase. We're going to learn about that life cycle today. Monarchs are extra special because they are long distance migrators. Notice how big this butterfly is. Not really so big when you consider that some monarch butterflies fly 2,000 miles during migration. We're going to learn about that migration. We're also going to learn some ways that we can help and support monarchs right here in Fairfield County. We're going to start at the beginning, of course. The start of a monarch's life cycle is an egg that a female monarch lays on the underside of a milkweed leaf. Always milkweed and only milkweed. We're going to talk about the importance of milkweed for our monarchs. Out of our egg hatches a very small caterpillar. The caterpillars eat the milkweed, either the plant that they were originally on or nearby plants. They grow very quickly. They shed their skin as they grow, kind of the way a snake does, but not exactly. This is a leaf from a common milkweed. Um, milkweed, when you open it, you'll see soon, does have a white milky sap. This one is a little dry because I collected it a few hours ago. Um, there are several different species of milkweed that grow here in Fairfield County. This one is common milkweed. This is the one we see most often along the side of roads, um, in meadows and things like that. That's all these caterpillars will eat. Turns out that milkweed is toxic. It doesn't make the caterpillar sick and it doesn't hurt the adult butterfly. But what happens while this caterpillar is eating, 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 eating that milkweed, it's storing those toxins up in its body. That helps the caterpillar and the adult butterfly quite a lot because it makes them taste bad. A predator is an animal that preys on another animal. It eats another animal. A predator for our monarchs most likely would be birds. Birds eat a lot of caterpillars and they eat a lot of butterflies and moths. Of course, if a bird tries to eat one monarch and it tastes bad, the bird is gonna remember that and probably leave monarchs alone from then on. I like these caterpillars so much that I made a video using a microscope that I could show you one of these caterpillars up close. This is the back end of the monarch caterpillar. That's where we're starting because that's where the caterpillar wanted to go. You'll notice those black antenna looking filaments. The caterpillars have those on both ends, so it can be a little bit tricky to know which is the head and which is the tail. It'll be a little more clear in just a moment. You'll notice those bright yellow colors. They're with the stripes that are yellow, black, and white. Bright colors like that in nature often send a message to predators that says, hey, I'm poisonous or I'm toxic or I don't taste good. And as we've discussed, that's true of our monarchs. I just love these caterpillars, all caterpillars. I think they're so fascinating and I like watching them up close. Now we're gonna go up to the front. You'll see this filaments there too. And you'll notice three legs popping out there. Those are true legs that our monarch caterpillar has. How many legs do insects have? Insects have six legs. You're only seeing the legs on one side of this caterpillar, but insects have six legs. They're in three pairs of two, which is true for the adult butterfly and also true for our little caterpillar here. Look at that striped head. Now, you might notice behind the three legs that you can see, you can see three more. Those are pro legs and on its entire body 
our monarch caterpillar actually has 10 of them. They're in five pairs of two. Pro legs are really sticky and they help the monarch stick to the milkweed plants without using a lot of energy. It's important that the monarch can stay on the milkweed because that's where it eats. That's where it needs to stay if a storm comes and it gets really windy. And if a predator tries to pull the monarch off of the milkweed, those sticky pro legs can make it harder for that to happen. Think about all the energy it takes for you to hold on to the monkey bars. If you're holding on to the monkey bars, your arms are getting tired and there's no way you're gonna be able to eat your lunch while you hang there. The pro legs on this caterpillar are so sticky that it makes it very easy for the monarch to stay attached to the milkweed. I could watch this all day. But after I made this video, I took this little caterpillar and put it back on the milkweed where I found it. As you can see, it's looking, it's searching. I tried to give it a fresh milkweed leaf to see if maybe it would eat for us, but it didn't want to do that. I'm sure our being in a microscope is a little bit of a strange experience. But like I said, I did put it back on its milkweed unharmed. There we go, trying to see if it wanted to eat, not so much. I probably wouldn't want to eat in this situation either. There we go, another look at the back and those pro legs. Super fun. All right, so again, here we have our caterpillar. Here's what the milkweed sap looks like. If you crack the milkweed leaf, you'll see this white milky sap. So we had our egg, we have our caterpillar, now we have our chrysalis. Now we're gonna get into some new words that you might not know. Chrysalis is one of them. A chrysalis is where a butterfly changes from being a caterpillar, a baby, in this case, to being an adult butterfly that can fly. That's a really big change. That's a lot more drastic than the growing that we do as humans, as mammals. When we're born, we pretty much look like humans and we grow and we change all the way through our lives, but we always pretty much look like humans. When it comes to a butterfly, the baby in this, in this, the caterpillar does not look much like the adult butterfly. This really big change is called metamorphosis. That might be a new word for you too, metamorphosis. I'm gonna count to three. I hope you'll say it with me. One, two, three, metamorphosis. So when we think about animals that have metamorphosis, what we're talking about are insects. Um, not all of them have metamorphosis the same way that our butterflies do, but they all have some sort of metamorphosis and also amphibians. So if you ever ask yourself, is this animal that I'm thinking about, does it have metamorphosis or not? Just ask yourself if the baby looks like the adult. Kitten pretty much looks like a cat. A caterpillar doesn't look like a butterfly or moth, and a tadpole doesn't look like a frog. Still, they're the same species. The tadpole is still a frog. It just needs to complete metamorphosis to be an adult. The caterpillar is still a butterfly or moth. It just needs to complete metamorphosis to be an adult. Once metamorphosis is complete, we will have an adult butterfly. The adult butterfly comes out of that chrysalis after about two weeks. And sometimes you can find them drying their wings. If you see one, you might be a little bit concerned because it often looks like the butterfly is injured. Its wings are all crumpled up. It just takes some time for the butterfly to pump its wings full of fluid and to dry them on the outside so that it can fly. That's the last phase of the butterfly's life cycle. So again, we started with an egg then out of the egg hatched a caterpillar. After the caterpillar was done growing, it formed a chrysalis, and out of the chrysalis comes our adult butterfly. What happens next? It happens again. If our butterfly is a female, she will lay more eggs on the underside of milkweed, and the whole cycle goes over again. Now this happens here in Fairfield County 
um, you can start seeing monarchs sometimes in May or June, but I usually don't start seeing very many until July. Um, and you'll have several different sizes of caterpillars at any time while this life cycle is going through different phases until we start to get into fall. So September or October, then we're starting to see adult monarchs that are going to migrate. This is a map of North America, and you can see the migration patterns. Over on the eastern side of the continent is where our Ohio monarchs migrate. So some of them come all the way from Canada, but they come through Ohio, and they go all the way down into Mexico. Some of these butterflies fly 2,000 miles to get to Mexico. If you left Fairfield County and drove to Orlando, Florida, where Disney World is, you would travel about 920 miles. So these butterflies, as small as they are, are flying twice that distance to get to their wintering grounds. Now that fall is coming, September and October, we can often see these adult monarch butterflies moving through on our migration south. If you watch for them this fall, just about anywhere in Fairfield County, I bet you can see them. Here they are spending the winter in Mexico with millions of other butterflies. As you might notice on the map, some of them are migrating along the west coast. Some of them are migrating to the west, but not all the way out to the coast. And then we have the ones in the east. They're all migrating to about the same places in Mexico, where it's not too warm and it's not too cold. They will feed on nectar from time to time, but they're resting and they're waiting for summer before they start moving north again. They'll start to move north, and as I mentioned before, they tend to arrive here in Fairfield County uh, in big numbers about in July. So as I mentioned, that little caterpillar that I had, I put right back on the milkweed where I found it. Um, you can collect a monarch caterpillar, and if you take good care of it and provide it enough milkweed, you can watch the whole life cycle, which is pretty great, and that's a good learning opportunity. You may be doing that at home or at school. Most of them, however, still need to be outside. These are wild animals, and almost always it's best for wild animals to be left in the wild. Scientists are not sure about the ability for monarchs raised in captivity, which means raised by humans inside. They're not sure if those are able to migrate the way that they need to. So if you wanna take a few to learn about their life cycle, I think that's a great idea. But in general, they do need to be left outside. So if you want to help monarchs, but you're not going to bring them indoors and raise them, what can you do? The most important thing you can do is to plant milkweed and other native plants. We've already talked about why milkweed is important because it's the only food source for this caterpillar phase. But other native plants with flowers can provide nectar for the adult butterflies as well. Native plants are super important. When we say native, what we mean are plants that belong here in Fairfield County. They didn't come from another continent like Europe. They didn't come from another state like California. They've been here in Fairfield County. This is where they belong. When you plant native plants, you can really help the entire wildlife of our area. So when you plant these native flowers and um, even grasses, insects will eat them. Insects might not be your favorite animal, but what likes to eat insects? Birds like to eat insects. Maybe your favorite animal is a bird. Or maybe your favorite animal is something bigger like um, a bobcat or a fox. We have both of those animals here in Fairfield County and they eat a lot of birds. So when you plant native plants, you're really helping out all the wildlife in our area. You can plant native plants in a big place like at your school. We do it in some of our parks but you can do small plantings in your backyard or your front yard, even if you only have a little bit of space. If you plant native plants, particularly milkweed, you will start to see a lot of life coming to your yard to use those plants, and you'll be supporting our native wildlife populations. Minimizing pesticide use is also important because of course, pesticides are supposed to kill insects. Our monarchs are insects, so we can protect them by not using any more pesticide than we absolutely have to use. And you can help us educate other people. You can let people know about the fascinating life cycle of the monarch. You can let them know about the egg, the caterpillar, the chrysalis, and the adult. 
You can let them know about their migration patterns and you can let them know about what they need in their habitat in order to thrive. What else would you like to know about monarchs? Your teacher has my email, comp my email information. I hope you will send me your questions. We also have several activities that you can do on our website. I will send those as well. Our website is fairfieldcountyparks.org. There are a lot of activities that you can do at home or in the classroom, and they all are about our native plants and animals that you will find right here in Fairfield County. I hope you enjoyed learning about our monarchs today. Uh, we will continue to do these programs, different programs and topics throughout the year. So maybe I'll be back in your classroom, even if it's only virtual. Hopefully you'll be able to come visit us in the parks as well. Thank you very much and have a great day.